Hello, amazing women of God. I am Sister Marilyn Macon, First Lady of the Mount Zion Church. It is my prayer that this short message encourages someone today. It is about something that I'm afraid this world has too little of, love. A very powerful four-letter word, love comes from God. And therefore, you must first love Him before you can love others. Dr. Martin Luther King and his wife Coretta said that after much contemplation, they felt they had discovered for themselves the most durable power in the universe and the highest good. It is love. Love was the guiding principle in their life, even as young people in their 20s with most of their life still before them. Their commitment to love gave them the courage to risk their lives for the freedom of their people. Their commitment to love gave them the courage and conviction to do what they felt was God's will. Though we may not make the enormous personal sacrifices that Dr. and Mrs. King did, we too must reach, must search our soul to discover what choosing to love will mean in our lives. How will you react when faced with great disappointment? How will you respond when someone disrespects you, treats you unfairly or unkindly? Yes, it is difficult to love those who do unkind things, but the more unlovable a person appears, the more in need of love they are. It is no fun holding on to grudges. The longer you hold on to anger, the more it hardens your heart. Bitterness limits you, your energy and your joy. Give up those feelings of resentment and gain your inner peace. Loving is essential to your spiritual development. When you are loving, you are living, living righteously. So despite the possibility of hurtful experiences, you can never lose. Even when others don't return your goodness, you always win. Because when you show love, you are in harmony with God and blessings will flow beyond measure in your life. I am reminded of something my grandchildren will sometimes say to me. They say when they can't get their way, Grammy, you don't care about me. My instant reply is, oh yes I do. That's why I'm correcting you, because I love and care for you so much. Of course they don't want to hear that, so they continue to pout. And some of us treat God the same way. When things are not the way we want them to be or struggles and troubles come our way, we think God does not love or care about us and we pout and complain. But as they say, don't get it twisted. God does love us and he loves us so much that he wants us to have the best. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love is kind and patient, never jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. Love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful, and trusting. Love never fails. A noun abide of faith, hope, and love. But of these three, the greatest is love. Why is love the greatest? Because love will never fail. May you all be blessed 
beyond measure because you show love.